peace of Christ to all in this video will answer Abdul about silly claim uh, somebody sent to me by email a Muslim Abdul saying what's wrong with Jesus first John chapter 3 verse 15 anyone who hate his brother is a murderer <laughs> okay Luke 14 26 if anyone comes to me and supposedly this is Jesus he's putting between a bracket and don't uh, and not hate uh, uh, his father, mother, wife, children, brothers, and sisters, as well as his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Now he got conclusion. Conclusion number one: uh, Jesus was telling a lie, or Jesus, uh, sorry, the Bible is corrupted. Now you know what? Uh, Muslims are very weird. Uh, first of all, here the Muslim is trying to prove to us what the point of this. He, he will not say Jesus is saying a lie, so he will come with the conclusion that the Bible is corrupted, which means he is screwing his God. Do you know why? Because the God of the Quran, he says that he is the one who sent the Bible to Jesus. He is the one who sent the Bible to Jesus. This is the Quran in front of us, and this is chapter 27, verse number, uh, 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 chapter 40, uh, 57, verse number 27. And the God, of, the God of the Quran saying that he is the one who sent Jesus with the gospel. So what the Muslims are trying to say to us today, that their God Allah got screwed. And it's very easy to screw their God and corrupt his book. It is an accusation actually against the God of Islam, not against our God. Because first of all, we do not believe in this Jesus here. This Jesus. This Jesus in the Quran, his name even is not Jesus, his name is Isa. Where the name Isa came from, nobody knows. Very confused Muhammad. He could not get one name correct. Not not, not even one correct name in the Quran. Uh, no, no, I have to be honest. Like uh, what about Maryam? Even that one, it was not correct because in that in that verse he meant Maryam, the sister of Harun. And all of us we know that Mary Maryam is really a sister of Harun, but this is not the mother or mother of Jesus. This is how stupid this man is. And he said Mary is the daughter of Umran. And uh, uh, Harun is the son of Umran. So he thinks that Umran is a father of Mary, a father of, uh, of uh, 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 Harun. Very stupid prophet. So, but the point in here, when a Muslim, he tried to accuse your Bible that it's corrupted. He is simply proving to us that Allah cannot be God. Why? Because the God who can't protect his book, he cannot be God anyway. You know, I can protect my, uh, I have a book. My book is The Deception of Allah. I challenge anyone to corrupt it. I challenge. You cannot. So how come me, the poor me, I can protect my book, but Allah, he cannot protect his book. And what the point of sending a book after book after book, and Allah don't want to protect them. Why he want to protect only the Quran according to Muslims? Which is very stupid, you know? It doesn't make sense. Is, is the words of Allah, some of it is better than the other one? Actually, yes. The Quran says so. And that is showing me that the God of the Quran is a stupid again. Chapter 2, verse 106. The God of Islam, he, he gave us a, an amazing wisdom, showing us that this book is made by an idiot. And I will tell you why he came with this idiot. Uh, the verse saying, none of our revelation do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Uh, I just saw a Muslim trying to say to us that the Bible is corrupt. Which mean, which mean, uh, the real Bible is forgotten, and the Quran saying here that Allah Himself is cause people to forget, even the Quran. Now, question, Muslims, why Allah gave you Quran if you wanted to forget? Ah, maybe Allah He found Himself mistaken somewhere. Ah, uh, four plus four, it is nine in the Quran, so Allah decided to make it six. Uh, but later he found it is uh, eight, so he decided to, uh, to abrogate some verses and make you forget it, and uh, maybe it, so he can correct himself. Like, isn't it stupid to send verse? And call, he he is the one who caused people to forget verses, and how that can be? The Muslim they say to us they memorize the Quran by heart. I challenge the Muslim to tell me which verses Allah he, he caused you to be forgotten. Oh, we can't tell you because we forgot them. <laughs> What a stupid religion. But the fact, I will tell you why Muhammad, he made this verse. 
the, the, the false prophet of Islam, Muhammad, he could not recite the same verse twice the same time. Each time he recites something, he comes with it with a different way. So the Muslim did notice that this guy is making things up. He can't even remember what he said yesterday. So he said to them, oh, whatever Allah, he caused me to forget, Allah will make similar or better. Oh, let us make it like Zakir Naik. A brother, the prophet, in the Quran, chapter 2, verse number uh, uh, 106, he said, none of our religion, we call to be uh, abrogated or to go to be forgotten, we make similar or better. Just wait, just wait. What do you mean similar or better? What do you mean similar or better? If you are going to make something similar, so why you caused me to forget the verse? Like, hello? Secondly, how a verse can be better than verse? <laughs> Allah Arabic is improving maybe a better a verse is better than a verse which one is better than other one Muslims which verse is better than other verse in the Quran <laughs> what a stupid religion the whole thing simply because Muhammad was fabric making fabrication so he had to come with this excuse he could not repeat the same thing twice uh, and actually uh, in Muhammad he came with other excuse he told the Muslims all oh, the Quran been given to me in seven letters Seven letters. Uh, what is seven letters? Well, ask the Muslims. Where is the seven Quran? If there are seven letters, it means seven Quran. Where are they? We have only one Quran. If the Quran, all of it, nizzle and, and, and they came down in seven dialect. Dialect, by the way, not mean that dialect as the, it mean the different words, uh, uh, because the language of Yemen is different from the language of Quraysh. Yes, all of it it's Arabic, but it's different, totally different. So Muhammad, he says, it's been given to me in seven dialect. But the fact, all the Quran we have is the dialect of Quraysh. Where is the dialect of Yemen? Where is the dialect? Where, where is the other dialect? We don't have them. So it is a lie again for Muhammad. He want to cover his lies by making more lies. Now, as long as we showed you that Allah is the one who caused people to forget the words of Allah, let us show you something else. Prove that you Muslims are really mad people. The God of the Quran, he said, that no one can change the word of Allah. No one can change the word of Allah. As an example, chapter 6, verse number 34. We can click at any translation, doesn't matter. All of them dictate lies. And you will see that uh, Allah has spoken about messengers came before Muhammad. Before what? Before Muhammad. And Allah is saying clearly that nobody can change the words. And actually, this translation is very weird. Let us see a different translation just to show you the stupidity even in their translation. They cannot even translate something correctly in Arabic. Uh, read what I mean here. There is none that can alter the words. The word of who? The, the word of who? The word of Allah. Nobody can alter the words of Allah. But I just showed you that Allah is saying in the Quran uh, that Allah, he gave the, the Bible to Jesus and the Muslims, they keep proving to us or trying to prove, oh, the Bible is corrupted. Uh, you know, but you are saying nobody can. Uh, and the Muslim, they will say to you, oh, oh Allah, and here he meant uh, the Quran. Yeah, just wait, but this verse is speaking about prophets before Muhammad. The messengers before the before thee, huh? None can change the words of Allah. So he is arguing with them that the messengers before thee, they they you know uh, the, the, their message is saved and nobody can corrupt it. And actually, we have a proof that even Muhammad has taken oath over the Torah, the Torah which Muslims today they say it's corrupted. Uh, once I asked uh, a Muslim in the Muslim room, it's called the Ensuring Christianity, something like this. Very funny. And the guy, his name is Muslim Knight. He's, he claimed to be a something, but uh, he's a very weird potato. So I, I asked him, why Allah, uh, why Muhammad is taking an oath over the Bible if it's corrupted? He said he is trying, he's just being nice. You know, like if you are a Christian, came to me and you gave me the Bible, what I will say to you, it's corrupted. I will take oath on it just to be nice. But, but wait, 
If this is true, it means Muhammad is a liar. If the Bible is corrupted and you take an oath over the corrupt book, it means you are taking an oath over the, the words of Satan. You swear by the book when you don't believe in a book, this is a hypocrisy and it means you are a liar. And this is exactly what Muhammad is about. He took an oath over the Bible and now the Muslim, they want to say to us, it was corrupted. The fact I challenged the Muslim to show me one verse in the Quran, it says the Bible is corrupted. Not even one. If we search in the whole Quran about where it says corruption, it never says corruption, by the way. But what, what, the, what the story Muhammad, he claimed, there's a story in the Hadith where he asked them about the stoning verse to, to the Jews. And one of the guys, he put his hand over the verse where it says that uh, the Jews should stone an adult or woman. So Muhammad, he said, you uh, uh, Let me read for you the verse uh, in, in, the, in the Muslim translation. Of the, of, of the Jews are those who uh, displace words from their right places. If we displace words from their right places, this is corruption. But that is not in the book. Never happened in the book. From the Jews, first of all, of the Jews, which means some, not all the Jews, which means the book is still exist. Secondly, not that corrupting the book, it is change the meaning. And I can prove it to you. This is the Islamic interpretation. Not even one Islamic book saying that the book was corrupted. All of them, they agree that this was, you know, changing the meaning of the words, not changing the words itself. And let me show you. Here we go. This is the interpretation of Ajlalain, chapter 4, verse number 46. They take the meaning out of their context. You see it? It's not me who's saying that. We can go to different interpretation. So, so when a Muslim he says, you know, such a thing, it's a joke, it's a lie, it's not even exist. Here we go. This is Ibn Abbas. Read with me. You see it? Not my words. Not my words, Muslims. I'm not the ones talking. This is your scholars. Some of those who are Jews, some, some, not all are Jews, which means the Bible still is correct. Because let us say, if some of them they try to play games and the others, they are still having the the book. It's meaning the book is exist and true book. Uh, uh, change words from their context. Who's saying that? This is your scholars. So not even one place in the Quran says that the Bible is corrupted. So you Muslims are a bunch of idiots, ignorant. You do not know even how to read your book. You do not know what is written in your book. Now we go, and the time is left to answer the question about uh, Jesus is lying. Abdul, the one who hate his brother is a murderer because Jesus, he says, even love your enemy. In the same time in here, you will see that Jesus is saying, even you have to hate yourself. What hate yourself mean? It's mean you don't love yourself. You don't be selfish. You love the Lord the same as the Lord. He loves you because Jesus, he said in the Bible that God loved the world. So he sent his only begotten son. So Jesus, he gave his life to you. So if you love anything more than the one who was coming to save you, even if you love yourself more, you are not equal to the love of Jesus because Jesus himself he did not love himself. He loves you more. So he loves you more. So what about you do? Return the love. So he's asking you, don't be selfish. Look at me. I did not love myself. I'm asking you to return love. I am the one who gave his life for you. Love me more. He is not asking you to hate your brother. And he's not asking you even to hate yourself or to hate your sisters. So there's no hate in Christianity. Love your enemy. And here what this verse is saying, don't be selfish. Don't love people over God. Don't love your brother over God. Don't love yourself over God. Do what Christ did. He gave himself to the church. So he himself sacrificed what more love he wants. Sacrifice his life for you. So what about you give him love? The first one who came to, 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 to rescue you, you and your family, all, all of you. So why you should be loving more anyone more than me? That's what Christ is saying. So he's not saying hate anyone. He is not saying uh, kill anyone. You Muslims are a bunch of ignorance, and Jesus Christ is 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 uh, is my witness. You will burn in hell for the crimes you do against Christianity by attacking the churches, by attacking the Bible, by making fun of Jesus. Shame on you and on your big Satan, Muhammad. Follow with me with more videos. Christ is Lord. Amen.